More than 400 million tons of plastic are made around the world every year. It's in almost everything around us, like bags, bottles, tools, tires, and more. But how do they make plastic? Where does it come from? Today, we're going to China, which has the world's biggest plastic plant. Every day, more than 10,000 tons of plastic are made there. Get ready, because today we're going to learn how a lot of plastic is made. Before we continue, make sure to subscribe and like the video. The first step is to get the oil out. Petroleum is a thick, dark oil that formed millions of years ago and is mostly used to make plastic. Petroleum comes from the fossils of plants and animals that lived in the oceans and lakes a long time ago. Over time, layers of sediment built up on top of these leftovers. The pressure and heat of the earth turned them into petroleum. Oil companies use huge drilling rigs to get this oil. These rigs go deep into the ground until they reach underground stores of crude oil. The oil can flow to the top because these drilling rigs go through layers of rock and sediment. The amazing fact is that a single drilling rig can get out more than 10,000 barrels of oil every day, which is the same as taking out about 400 tons of plastic. But the crude oil that was taken is not yet ready to be used. It is a thick, dark blend that is full of impurities. It is important, but it needs to be refined first before it can be used to make things like plastic. Once the oil has been taken out, it needs to be taken to a plant to be changed into something much more useful. Let's go! The second step is to refine the oil. After the oil is removed, it is taken to refineries, where it starts to change. The crude oil that comes in is full of impurities and chemicals that can't be used to make plastic, so it needs to be cleaned up. Once the crude oil gets to the extraction towers, it is heated to 200 to 400 degrees. Because of their different boiling points, these heat waves split the oil into its different parts. Most of the heavy compounds like fuel oil and asphalt are at the bottom of the tower. The lighter compounds like gas and gasoline are at the top. The naphtha, a liquid near the top of the tower, is what we're most interested in in this process. The chemicals that make up naphtha are used as a base to make plastics. The naphtha is burned to very high temperatures to break up its big, complicated molecules into smaller, simpler ones, like ethylene and propylene. This process is called cracking. Plastics like polyethylene and polypropylene can't be made without these substances. We already have the important chemicals, but we still need to do a lot of work to make plastic parts out of them. Now let's see what comes next. That's it for the third step. It is time to turn ethylene and other chemicals from oil into plastic, now that we have them. Next, we'll do something called polymerization to make this happen. To put it simply, polymerization is the process by which small molecules of ethylene join together to make plastic. Large industrial reactors are used for this process. Heat and pressure are used to join the molecules together and make the long strings of plastic. The plastic can be more stiff or more flexible depending on how the process is run. For instance, high-density polyethylene is stronger and more rigid, and it's used to make things like plastic cases or bottle caps. Low-density polyethylene, on the other hand, is more flexible and soft, and it's best for making plastic bags or food wrap. After the processing is done, the plastic needs to be turned into a mass that can be molded. Come on, look at it! Step 4 is to extrude and shape the material. The material is already ready. It's time to shape it now. This is the step where the plastic starts to change into things we know, like bottles, bags, and parts for cars. The polymerized plastic first goes through a step called compression. At this point, the plastic is heated to very high temperatures until it can be shaped and sticks together. After that, this mass goes through a machine called an extruder. This machine has a nozzle that is made like the finished product we want to make, like filaments, tubes, or sheets. The extruder makes the form you want by pushing the hot plastic outward. Every day, these extrusion tools can make more than 10 tons of plastic. It's really amazing to see them work. After being shaped during the molding process, the plastic is quickly cooled to make it hard and keep its shape. It's now ready for the next step, which is to shape it. When you mold plastic, you put it in molds that give it its finished shape. Different kinds of molds are used for different kinds of goods. One of the most popular is injection molding, in which hot plastic is pushed into a mold under a lot of pressure. This process works quickly and accurately to make things like bottle caps, gadget parts, and even the housings for electronics. Now that the plastic has been shaped, it needs to cool down and be perfected. Let's go! Step 5. Let it cool down and cut it out. The plastic needs to cool down and be cut after it has been shaped. 
This is very important to make sure it stays in the right shape and is ready to use. To start, the hot plastic is slowed down so it can harden. There are several ways to do this. Most of the time, the plastic is put in tanks with cold water that is about 10 tervru. Different types and thicknesses of plastic need different amounts of time to cool. Usually, the plastic is left in the water for a few minutes. It can also be cooled in the air or with cooling belts, but only in a controlled space so that it doesn't change shape. The plastic can be cut after it is cooled down the right way. Even though it's already shaped, we need to cut it to get the exact shape we want. This is where an automatic cutting machine is used. This machine cuts plastic parts very quickly and can make thousands of them every day based on the type of product. This is a very important step to make sure the plastic keeps its quality and shape. Now that the plastic has cooled and been cut, it's time to finish it off. Come on, look at it. The sixth step is to print and decorate. Now that the plastic is cool and cut, it's time to make it unique by printing and decorating it. The plastic is usually white or see-through at this point, so colors, logos, designs, and labels need to be added to give it the end look that each brand wants. This not only makes them look better, but it also makes sure that they follow labeling rules by including the brand name, how to use them, and safety information. In this step, special printing tools are used to print on the plastic with an accuracy of just a few millimeters. The kind of writing changes based on the item. For instance, screen printing is often used on bottles, while inkjet printing or hot pressing are used in other situations. Specialized printers can print on thousands of items every day, ranging from food boxes to parts for appliances. They are very fast and accurate. The printing and decorating are now done, and the plastic has its final shape and is perfectly labeled and decorated. So now it's time to pack it up and give it to people. Come on, look at it. Step 7. Package and send out the goods. Now that the plastic is ready, it's time to package it up and send it out to people. This is the last thing that needs to be done before the goods can be sold and get into our hands. Packing the plastic in big amounts, whether in bags, boxes, or special containers, is done by automatic machines that work very quickly, handling tens of thousands of items every day. Once the plastic is packed, it is sealed to keep its quality while it is being shipped. Once the pieces are packed up, they are put on pallets and sent to their end destination in trucks or shipping containers. Plastic that is going to be used to make certain things like electronics parts or food packaging is also taken to companies that make those things. This substance can be found everywhere in the world in everything from water bottles to tech parts. That being said, it's important to note that plastic is one of the biggest environmental problems even though it makes our lives easier. It is bad for ecosystems and people's health that more than 52 million tons of plastic are dumped into the world every year. From its beginnings in oil to its widespread use, plastic is an all-around material that requires precision and modern technology. Finally, tell us, were you surprised by how much work goes into making plastic? What do you believe we should do to clean it up? Be sure to leave your answer below. Also, if you like this video, please like it and subscribe to see more interesting production methods.